I've enlisted the help of Dr. Kieran O'Keefe. Hi, Kieran, I'm Danny. Hi, Danny. Hello. A parapsychologist who spent 15 years hunting the ghost hunters. So, Kieran, tonight we're going to be trying to prove these psychics are fake. Exactly. I'll be looking out for cold reading strategies, fishing. They'll be looking out for your reaction and anybody that's standing around them to try and see if they're getting confirmation of the information that they're coming up with. I've got Kieran to write me a fake history, which I've printed onto official-looking chocolate factory pamphlets. I've even hung a picture in the foyer of the factory's fictitious first manager, George Bull. So, so what you might get with one of the mediums is they might feel the pain in their legs. Of, of George losing his legs? Of George losing his legs. We know, though, that if our mediums come up with any of these names linked to the chocolate factory, they're talking a load of bull. Yeah, we want that and we want George Bull and we want the story associated that we've written for the chocolate factory. I so want George Bull. Yeah, I want George Bull too. George, don't fail us now, yes. wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Can, can you work out, like... My knee's gone. Your, your knee's gone. <laughs> yeah, right. Kieran, how on earth are we going to cover this place? It is absolutely enormous. There are so many different cells and so much paranormal activity. Where do we start? From a simple logistic point of view, there aren't enough people to cover the entire building all at the same time. What we are going to have to do is have, I guess, a parapsychological full-scale attack with all of the machinery. Have the lock-offs, have trigger objects, have the MP3 recorders, have the thermal imager. Try and have as much equipment down there as possible because it is such a huge place. In one place we might be focusing on experience, another place we'll be having the monitoring equipment. <laughs> Are vampires just off a fairy tale, or do they exist? Well, I mean, if you go with the vampire definition as blood-sucking, reincarnated corpses, then no. Yeah. They're just oh. going to be fairy tales, basically, yeah. at the end of the day. At least that's my professional opinion. Yeah. <laughs> when did the first references to vampires first appear? Um, well, there are references in uh, Sumerian mythology, Babylonian demonology, but the main area comes from Serbia and the Slavic people, I guess, from Poland and Russia, that sort of area. Um, but there are references throughout history for that sort of thing. There are genuinely people that think they are vampires. They're called sanguinarians, and they actually drink people's blood, and they think they, they become Ooh. immortal from it. And they're, like, in the States, they're on the FBI's list, aren't they? Yeah, there's yeah. classification of things called vampire killers, which are people that genuinely drink the blood of others. So it's a freaky area. <laughs> Mary King's Close is reputedly haunted. There are a number of physical experiences that people have had, which include sensing a drop in temperature, um, related to a sense of presence. When people come into a place like this, they're highly suggestible. They know they're coming into a reputedly haunted place. Also, it looks very, very spooky. Small amounts of infrasound can be present in many ordinary buildings. But Kieran and Steve want to investigate if there are significantly high levels here at Mary King's Close. There is obviously clear infrasound in this room. Definitely. At around 15 hertz. 15 hertz. Which is great because it ties in possibly with previous research that says the presence of infrasound might be causing some of the experiences here at Mary King's Close. But what did you make of, of those two particular experiments? Of the, of the movement of yeah. those objects? Well, uh, I think I've commented before on this sort of thing. Parapsychologists are aware of normal explanations for these particular things occurring. The great thing about the table turning, though, was the way we set up with the tablecloth so that you could see instantly if anybody was pushing it. And that's why it'd be great to look back at the footage and see if that happened. And I, I was examining it very closely, and for me, I don't think that occurred. Now, now Louis, interestingly, Derek, says that um, the table moving and indeed the glass moving is involuntary muscular movements. This is what he said. He said, you did it. I think what he's saying also... <laughs> yeah. He's saying it's involuntary as well. He's saying that's what he's saying. So he's saying it's not any sort of conscious conscious movement and I think we're all very clear that that didn't happen um, but as far back as 1852 Faraday was looking into these sort of things parapsychologists are still studying it even now and there's still it's still an open book the principle of it is that there are statements or certain statements that exist and delivered in such a way and if I tell you that they're specifically for you you will interpret them as accurate whereas if I tell somebody else and give them exactly the same statements, they'll also interpret them as accurate. For somebody that's going for a one-on-one -on -one reading from an astrologer, they look at the natal chart, it's very, very compelling 
that all of this information comes from this chart. It comes from the configuration of the time that they were born. It's a fa fascinating area of paranormal advice because it does seem to be shrouded in this scientific basis. You know, it's been around for, what, 2,000 years or so and has pr remained pretty much consistent in terms of these charts since then. I want somebody to question what they see and what they experience. By the way, this isn't funny. You're actually meant to be serious at this point. What we're telling you is very serious and you have to listen to every single word. The first step in you becoming the ultimate ghost hunter is seeing how susceptible you are to the paranormal. On the basis of just that task, do you think you're the ultimate ghost hunter? I think I've given it a fair crack. I didn't run out you straight screamed. away. Screamed? Screamed? You screamed very loudly. Lots of stuff happened and yet you didn't really investigate and you didn't last the distance. Okay. Why on earth would I turn around and say you're the ultimate ghost hunter? I have to say I'm quite impressed by Anne and Charlotte at the moment. Initially I was a bit dubious, but Anne is a very honest person and Charlotte seems to have more of a critical thinking mind than I initially thought she would, so I'd like to watch those two a lot more closely and I'm quite impressed with them so far. For me, it's not a question of belief. I'm a scientist. It's all about objectivity. Recently, the physical eye, people would think they were rabbits. This is the first that I've heard of departed souls actually manifesting themselves in the form of bunnies. It's the first time I've heard it, and hopefully it'll be the last time.